In this lecture, we're going to build our own smart contract for a custom NFT built on that token standard. So inside of my contracts folder, I'm going to right click and create a new file. I'll call this mytoken.solidity. Before we jump into this video, go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership and get access to all of the courses we've ever created. That's over 2,000 hours of content. And you can also, of course, do that via the terminal or command line application. Okay, great. So we have our file. First thing I want to do is specify what version of the Solidity compiler is going to be used. Here I'm going to specify with Pragma, Solidity, and we want to use version 0 0.8.0. So that means we will have to use that Solidity compiler to compile this version of the contract. And I want to use that because that's what my ERC721 Solidity file is using. So I want to just keep that consistent. If you want to use a different Solidity version, you can. Just note that if you do have a different Solidity version, sometimes the code can change, the language can change. So you do have to be aware of language changes. Typically, you want to just keep consistent with whatever your token standard is. If your ERC721.Solidity file is using 0 0.8.0, use the same for your custom token. Okay. Next, here, we are going to get this message that it wants us to provide a license. So we can add in a license identifier like MIT to the top of the file as well. That will prevent it from complaining. And by it, I mean my code editor's checking of the code. All right, now, we are going to build a new contract with the keyword contract. And then we can give our contract a name like my token. Pay careful attention to this name because that is going to be a name that you use later on. So this you can use as the name of your token. Like I'm calling it my token, but you could have it be called Alex token, whatever kind of NFT name you want to give this. So I'm going to just do my token. You don't have to have the word token in it. You could just call this mammoth, right? I'm going to just keep it as general my token. Now we're going to specify that this NFT contract is an ERC721. This means that the parent of my contract is ERC721. That is what I imported in here via ERC721.Solidity. Specifically, it refers to inside of that file, it refers to the very last contract we had here, which was ERC721. So I'm specifying that this contract is the parent of my token, which means that my token can use functions and properties of its parent. Now for this ERC721, we are going to pass in a name and a symbol because if you go into the ERC721 contract, you can see it has a constructor for initializing a contract and the constructor is asking for a name and a symbol for your token. So that's why we have to pass in after ERC721 a name and a symbol here. Okay, for that I'm going to make a couple of constants. I'll make a string constant name and here you can put in the name of your token like my token. Typically you want to keep the name consistent with the contract name. We'll have another constant symbol and here I'm going to use a symbol M TKN for a my token without any of the vowels. This is the symbol that will be used on the blockchain for your token. Okay, great. So we have the name and the symbol. Now you'll get a message that an identifier is not found or not unique, this ERC721. That's because if we want to actually use the ERC721 contract, we have to tell this Solidity file right here, where does that contract come from? So after we specify the Solidity version, we're going to import our ERC721 contract. So where is that contract? It actually is inside of the same folder as mytoken.solidity. They're both inside of this contracts folder. That means to import the 
standard, I can just go into the parent folder with dot slash. That is referring to the parent folder of the current folder and then go into ERC 721.sol, which is the extension for Solidity. Okay, so there we go. Now we no longer have that message that ERC 721 is not found or undefined because now we've imported in this Solidity file. So any contract you want to use, you have to import where it's from unless it's actually directly in the same file. Okay, great. So we have been able to set up the contract. All right now for this token, we can specify more properties and we can also specify functions to actually be able to perform actions like mint the token. Now we can go into our terminal or command line and go into our project folder. Inside of my project folder here, I want to test if my smart contract can compile with a Solidity compiler. For that, I use npx truffle compile and hit enter and this will tell me if my smart contract can compile or not in its current state. Okay, and let's take a look at what we have here. Okay, so we can see which contracts we're attempting to compile. We're attempting to compile erc721.solidity, migrations.solidity, and mytoken.solidity. But we get this parser error that the source file requires a different compiler version, 0.8.0, whereas my current compiler version is 0.5.16. So Truffle is currently using Solidity compiler 0.5.16. We have to update Truffle config to use which Solidity compiler we want to use. So I'm going to go back into my code editor and I'm going to go into truffle-config. Here I can specify the compiler. So this is the default compiler for my Solidity project. We have version 0.5.6 and then here these are commented out but we can comment these back in. So if I comment this back in now, my Solidity compiler version is 0.5.1. But I want to change this to 0.8.0 because that is what all of my contracts are using. They are using 0.8.0 and you want to check that all of them are using that one. Migrations is using a range, but as long as your compiler version falls into the range, then you're fine. Okay, so we can see that all of our contracts are using 0.8.0. And now we specified our Truffle compiler version for Solidity in truffle-config. So now if I go back to my terminal and I rerun my command npx truffle compile, I'm going to recompile my, my contracts. So look at this. Now we have fetched a new compiler version. Okay, here, read these error messages carefully because it looks like we got a message that we have multiple SPDX license identifiers found in a source file in ERC 721.solidity. This can happen when you're using the truffle flattener. So if you go into ERC 721.solidity, the complaint is about this SPDX license identifier appearing multiple times. So just control F for it and then just remove it wherever it appears except for the first time. So this can happen from the truffle flattener. It can add in these things that truffle no longer wants. So you're just going to remove all of those. So read whatever messages truffle gives you. It will tell you what the problem is. So I'm going to only keep the top license identifier. Go back to the terminal. So truffle has told me that I had that parser error. I fixed that. Now I can try again with npx truffle compile. So be careful and read the messages that you get. It will tell you what you need to change when you're trying to compile your smart contracts. And look at this. Now I get the message that we have a successful compilation. We've compiled erc721.solidity, migrations.solidity, mytoken.solidity. And the artifacts were written to my project folder slash build slash contracts. It was compiled successfully with the my Solidity version. So great, now we fixed all the problems and Truffle has been able to compile our Solidity 
smart contracts with the specified Solidity compiler. So Truffle is doing the compilation for us and it actually is going to write artifacts to slash build slash contracts. So you'll notice inside of your project folder, you now have a folder called build. This appears whenever you compile for the first time and then whenever you recompile, these will get updated. This is just JSON data about your contracts. So we have a bunch of JSON files now. You can see we have address, context, ERC-165, ERC-721, and more. These are all compiled because they were all used in our smart contracts. Some of them were just used for my token. We have mytoken.json, which tells us metadata or JSON data about our contract. It's just a way to JSONify your smart contract. You can see all the properties about that. And this file is huge. Look at this. It has a lot of data. Then the others were generated because we re relied on the ERC-721 standard, which requires all of these different interfaces and contracts. Okay, so awesome. We've been able to successfully create a new smart contract that is an NFT. We already have that just by creating this child of ERC721 and giving it a name and a symbol. We're using the ERC721 constructor to build out each of our NFTs. So I can see inside of my folder here inside of the file of ERC721.solidity I have my contract ERC721 and it has a constructor which we passed to the parent from the child. Thanks for watching and don't forget to go to training.mammothinteractive.com. Here you can sign up for the Mammoth Unlimited membership where you can get access to over 350 courses that we've created.